Because I guess people know when I'm talking about Tozer because suddenly I get this smile on my face and I kind of go, ooh, it's Tozer. <laughs> oh well, it could be someone else, I mean, just as easily, but God used A.W. Tozer in some ways to speak to me just like my utmost or daily night or streams in the desert or God calling or the Jesus said devotionals that we're doing and the Psalms devotionals that he chose those in my life to speak to me in a personal intimate way that I get the opportunity now at I would say the end of my life to share those things that he's brought me through with 35 years of doing these that now it's fun and exciting to relate what God has spoken through to me as well as maybe to you if it fits in your circumstances because if you're watching or if you're listening it's the Holy Spirit and only the Holy Spirit that can make it real for you and real in you I can't do it and you can't do it it's not a matter of programming yourself or convincing yourself or suddenly working up some kind of faith inside that is going to make you some super saint those are just ideas that men and women have that they come up with in religion the bottom line is God saved you God is working in you God is speaking to you God is causing the circumstances of your life to work out for his glory and that your response to him is what will determine whether you're a vessel of honor or a vessel of wrath because you see whether you know it or not whether you accept it or not God is in control of the universe now that sounds marvelous and wonderful that he's out there in charge of the universe but he's also in charge of the world oh, okay well oh, fine he's also in charge of everything including the very details of your life that every hair of your head is counted that every aspect of your choices that you're making today as well as tomorrow if you live so long <laughs> as well as any day that you're alive he already knows what you will do and how you will think and how you will feel and what your intentions were so he knows and he's helping you to reveal to you who you are so that you could trust him because he's love and loves you anyways because he gave his son for you it's interesting is my sister god bless her you know uh, mary lynn we call her chickadee she inherited all the worries of the family now me when i got saved i was like Pfft. i trusted the lord immediately it's like i didn't worry about anything and she worried about everything and she would always ask my mother because my mother got saved later and i shared with her and god saved her anyways but the point being is that she always was seeking because she was worried about what god thought she wouldn't ask god you know she was too fearful of the lord to really get intimate with God to find out that God loves her just the way she is so she'd always ask my mother and my mother made an interesting point to her consistently and taught my other sisters this because they likewise had different perspectives of God and interpretations of how God dealt with them according to their lives and they're saved God bless them <laughs> all three of them I have three sisters they're all younger but in each one of them my mother said this if you're worried about it you're right meaning that if you're concerned about something that God is convicting you of I mean let's put this in spiritual terms so it doesn't sound just kind of worry and anxiety and fear and fret because that's not what the perspective was but when my mother was intimate with my sisters before she died she had a sarcasm that worked in a certain way with them and other people that what she meant by if you're worried about it was more that if you're concerned if you have a genuine feeling inside that you need to seek the Lord about it and you need to admit that you're a sinner or that you need to confess your sins then you're on the right path because as long as you're feeling convicted about a sin God can work with you but when you don't feel like you're a sinner when you consider yourself as arrived as holy or righteous then it's possible God may be done with you <laughs> and in some ways some people I praise the Lord trust that God 
will deal with them according to his choices and I pray his love and mercy and grace takes care of them but she brought out something to them that we all will do one day we will stand before God to give an accounting for our lives to give a recollection or to receive the reward or the recompense of what we've done with our life and that's really what walking with God is all about what have you done with God lately what have you done with God today you see it wasn't about God saving you so you could go off on your own way and have a wonderful life and live a wonderful way and do what you think is just spiritual and just religious but it's walking with God every day it's will God say he knows you when he meets you face to face in heaven because in the Sermon on the Mount Jesus said that many people would come and they had done the gifts of the Spirit they had done marvelous works they had done all kinds of miracles and they weren't false they were genuine but they had done them for the Lord and not with the Lord and that's a sad place to be that if you rind up in heaven and Jesus doesn't know you he says he casts you out so my mother was correct in one way we all give an accounting to God for our daily our moment by moment actions intentions and in life because God is the author and the finisher of our faith he began a good work in you he will complete the work in you he is the one who is doing in you to accomplish his purpose now what you get to participate in is you get to participate in will you be a vessel of honor or a vessel of wrath and I think God if he chose you is making you a vessel of honor in Tozer spiritual our final accountability will be to our maker so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God Romans 14 12 it was the belief in the accountability of man to his maker that made America great at one time one of our great leaders was Daniel Webster who confessed the most solemn thought that has ever entered my mind is my accountability to my God men are free to decide their own moral choices but they are also under the necessity to account to God for those choices the direction of a man's heart is his own but the footsteps are ordered of the Lord that makes them both free and also bound for they are bound to come to judgment and give an account of the deeds done in the body you have probably heard the concept that every man stands only before the bar of his own reason and of his own conscience meaning that every man will have in his own self either conviction or confirmation either a concern or a conceit in other words they are seeking to be rationalizing or rational about who they are in Jesus this is the infamous relativity of morals that is taught in many of our universities and colleges our young folks are taught that each man is a law unto himself and that good is whatever brings social approval and that evil is whatever brings social disapproval meaning the majority creates the morals or mores of the society rather than God being the determinant factor what God says God means and if God says don't do and you do then that's disobedience the morality in a social adaptability of what modernism has created says well we take the circumstances and say what's best for the people would be the reality of what's good for the morals in other words if it doesn't affect the reality of causing the entire people to suffer then the morals are changed to fit that circumstance and that's evil because the Jew in the same way had created the same law better that one man die than the whole nation perish and they did not know that that was a prophecy that better that one man die that the whole nation be saved because the whole world was saved in one man dying and they chose the opposite which is always the anti of what God was doing which was the anointing of the Messiah of Jesus himself being the salvation of the people not the condemnation 
If that were true, there would be as many moral codes as there are human beings. And each one of us would be our own witness, our own prosecutor, our own judge, our own jury, our own jailer, and our own determining factor. And in some people, it is. No, God is not going to make man accountable to himself. Neither is he going to make you and me accountable to the law. Finally, nor to human society, finally, in the end. We are accountable to the one who gave us our being who caused us to live, who created life, who made us what we are. We are accountable to the one out of whose heart we were loved and who laid his laws upon us. The idea of man's accountability only to himself is so silly as to scarcely be worthy of consideration. It is not in man to determine his own direction, but it is in man to respond to the instruction of God who has determined where, what, how, why, and who he should live for. Jesus came to reveal that the religion of man had failed because it had separated itself from the reality of knowing God. When you know God, you can ask him and respond to him. When you don't know God, then you are dealing with interpretation, application, and process of separation from God himself as being alive to man being God himself and making something real for themselves. That is the process that Romans warned us of in taking the incorruptible image of God and making it into the corruptible image of man. We ought not to follow religion if it leads us in a wrong direction, but if it points us and causes us to have a relationship with God, then the religion causes us as a stepping stone to become in tight relationship with God that we could ask him what do you want for us to do today we are accountable for our choices today and as you open up your day to God and the reality of asking him as though he were sitting here and alive which he is then you have discerned and you have decided and you have chosen what Jesus said he did. Jesus said he only did those things he saw his father doing. He only did those things he knew his father wanted done and he spoke to his father and his father spoke to him. That's your goal because anything else than God directing you might be you directing yourself.